Greetings to you, brothers and sisters, and may the peace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ be with you always. Today we're talking about the price that is to be paid by all who want to have a close walk with Jesus Christ. There are so many people who desire to have a very close walk or to be extremely close to the Lord. But for many people, it only ends up as a desire and they are not able to because there is a price that is to be paid for those who are going to step into this realm. We read that at the death of Jesus Christ, the veil in the temple tore in two, creating an entry for each and every person to have access to the Lord by coming into the Holy of Holies, which is the place of greatest intimacy or greatest closeness to the Lord. And the invitation has gone out to each and everyone. Each and every person has been invited into the Holy of Holies to come and enjoy in a very intimate relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. So just to give a few examples of people who worked closely with the Lord. We read of Moses, for example. Moses is someone who was extremely very close to the Lord. And we see, when we study the life of Moses, we're going to see that Moses had to live a life of sacrifice. He also had a price to pay for that during his journey of walking closely to the Lord. For example, we come to read of Moses spending 40 days on, on the top of Mount Sinai without food or drink. He was basically in fasting. And when he came down from the mountain, he came down and found that the Israelites had backslidden and they had made themselves a golden calf. And Moses ended up going back on the mountain another 40 days. And that wasn't easy. We read of Abraham, a friend of God. Abraham had to be tested severely by the Lord and he had to pay a heavy price. The Bible tells us that Abraham, after enduring years of childlessness, after waiting for many years for his promised child, when finally the Lord fulfilled his promise to give him and his wife a son by the name of Isaac, the Lord had to test him if he could give him his greatest treasure, his greatest possession, which was his son. And Abraham willingly almost sacrificed his, his own son, the only son that he had with his beloved wife, Sarah, and he was willing to give him up. And when Abraham had passed that test. The Lord said that, now I know that you cannot withhold anything from me. So Abraham had to pay a price of being willing to give up everything to the Lord. We read of so many examples, even in the Old Testament, of people who walked closely with the Lord. We, we read of Daniel, for example and how he had to endure testing as well. You know, he had to be willing to give up even his own life and be ready to be thrown into the lion's den. He had to live a life of self-denial. We read of Daniel fasting for 21 days, for example. When we read of all these people who walked very closely with the Lord, one thing that we're going to discover is that all these people were people who were willing to give up everything for the Lord. And they all had a price that they had to pay for that close walk with the Lord. When we come now to the New Testament, we find that now in the New Testament, our Lord Jesus Christ tells us the condition of those who would walk close with him he says that if any man wants to come after me, he must deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. 
three things. Self-denial. Take up your cross, which is now continuous self-denial, and to follow him. And this is the reason why, for so many of us, we have a desire, but it only ends up as a desire and is never fulfilled. The first price that anyone who wants to have a close walk, who wants to be very close to the Lord, must pay is the price of self-denial, which is the price of consecration to the Lord. We must be separated to the Lord. There are many things that may be considered normal, but for you who wants to pursue the Lord and have that close relationship with him, you cannot take part of. The Bible tells us that do not grieve the Holy Spirit. There are many things that are considered normal in the world that actually grieve the Spirit of God. I'll give you an example. If you have someone who's constantly angering you, if you have someone who has this habit, you know, of always constantly doing something that angers you, are you going to be drawn to that person and want to always be near them? Obviously, you're going to want to be distant because you don't want them to do that thing that angers you. It is the same thing when we grieve the Spirit of God. It pushes us away from Him. It creates a distance between us and God. The Bible says that it is not that the, the ears of the Lord is too deaf to hear your prayers. It's not that his hand is too short to save you, but it is your sins that have separated you from the Lord your God. It is your iniquities that have hidden his face from you. So our sins cause the Lord to hide his face from us. So all of us who, want, who desire to have a close walk with Jesus Christ, we must be consecrated. To be consecrated means to be set apart for the Lord. You know, in the Old Testament, the things that were considered to belong to the Lord, the things that were used in the temple, for example, or the holy vessels, you know, the vessels and all the things, the articles that were used in the temple, they were considered holy. They were considered to be consecrated because they could not be used for any other thing but for the Lord only. You could not get the vessels that are in the temple that are supposed to be for the Lord and take them to your home and start using them for your everyday use. No, they were consecrated, meaning they were set apart. They were specifically for the Lord. And now, when we come in the New Testament, where we as believers are to be consecrated to the Lord, it means that we are to be set apart the same way that the holy vessels that were to be that were considered sacred and holy, you know, consecrated to the Lord, they were set apart only for the use of the Lord. It is the same with us. The Bible says that you cannot eat at the table of the Lord and at the table of demons at the same time. So if we want to draw near to the Lord, if we want to be close to the Lord, it is very important for us to be set apart for the Lord. That means that we have to get rid of those little foxes. We have to catch the little foxes, you know, the things that people take for granted and say, oh, it doesn't matter, you know, this is just a joke. You know, the foolish jokes, for example, that people may think it's not such a big deal, but it grieves the spirit of God. And you're not going to come near and have that close relationship and close walk with God if you're going to continue to compromise. There are times when the spirit of God is going to gently correct you and tell you, don't do that. You know, don't watch this video. Maybe you are just browsing, you know, don't look at this. And then you're like, oh, let me just look at it very quickly. I'm going to stop and I'm going to repent and I won't do it again. Those are all things that hinder us from having that close relationship with Jesus Christ. We must be consecrated to the Lord. We must be set apart 
for the Lord. That means obedience. You know, consecration and obedience are very closely connected because consecration is based on obedience to the Lord. You know, you know what, what the Lord requires, you know, and you start to obey the Lord. You set yourself apart because the Lord is more important to you. So we must be obedient to the Lord and obedience is very important to the Lord. You know, the Lord started to teach me about obedience very early on in my relationship with him. I'll give you an example. You know, one day, my sister Zipporah, you know, she was at my elder sister's house. And while she was praying, after she was done praying, the Lord told her that now that you're done praying, just stay where you are. Don't get up until I tell you that now you can go. And it wasn't a strange thing because this happened to me and Zipporah a lot at the beginning when we just started to seek the Lord. The Lord taught us that he was doing that in order to teach us how important obedience is. Like the Lord could literally just pour a program without any prior warning and to see if we were going to obey him. Like we would plan to do something. Then the Lord just tells you that don't go there. Just stay here where you are and you have to obey. And the Lord told us that I'm teaching you to show you how important obedience is to me. And you cannot be close to the Lord without obedience. So wh while my sister was waiting on the Lord, you know, to release her and tell her that now you can go about your business. And she was still in the very place where she had been praying from. My elder sister was not home. So somebody came to the house, to my elder sister's house. And this person was an acquaintance to my elder sister. And she knew that Zipporah was alone in the house and it had now gotten dark and Zipporah had not gotten up to turn on the light because of the instruction the Lord had given her, you know. And when the Lord told her that, you know, that's when somebody came and started calling out to Zipporah outside, you know, are you okay there, Zipporah, are you okay? It's getting dark. Why are all the lights off? Is everything okay in there? You know, and my sister had two choices. She could either disobey the Lord just in order to please this woman, you know, or to look like, you know, like a normal or something. But she had to choose to stay still and obey the Lord and not care what that person was going to think who was outside. And the Lord was actually just testing her and teaching her how obedience is that when the Lord has asked you to do something, it doesn't matter what somebody is going to think. We must know that Jesus Christ is very, very important, much more than anybody else and much more than anyone else's opinion. So my sister had to stay there until that person had to go away finally but she had to obey the Lord. So we cannot serve the Lord and be close to him without being obedient. We must be obedient. If you are still entertaining sin in your life, deliberately living in sin and praying and expecting to be close to the Lord, you cannot be close to the Lord. You must deny yourself. Jesus says it clearly, deny yourself. That means leave your sin. Leave those things that you love. Take up your cross. That means now you, it's a lifestyle of self-denial because the cross is a place of death. Okay, the cross represents death, just like Jesus was killed on that cross. So each one of us, we must kill the desires of our flesh, all our desires that are contrary to the will of Jesus Christ, they must all be killed on that cross. Then now we can follow the Lord. Now we go wherever the Lord leads us. Now we do what the Lord tells us because the Lord says, and follow me. The Lord cannot share you with the world. God says that I'm a jealous God. God cannot compete for you with idols. He cannot compete for you with anything. 
He already showed you his love by sending his son to die on the cross. So now it's up to us on how we are going to respond to the Lord. But the Lord is not going to compete for us with the idols that we choose. The Lord gives us free will. It's up to us to deny those idols and come after Jesus Christ. When I just started to seek the Lord, I was so addicted to the internet and I had to get rid of my phone in order for me to just focus on the Lord and to just be consecrated, to be set apart for him. We, if we want to live a life where we can partake of the things of the world, and when I talk about the things of the world, I mean sin, sinful things that are considered normal in the world. We cannot partake of the Lord. You cannot partake of the table of demons and of the Lord. If you, if you just go to the table of the demons, then the Lord is going to keep his distance. You know, he says, your sins have separated you from the Lord because you're grieving the Holy Spirit, just as you would not want to be close to someone who's always angering you. But you repent of your sins and you begin to obey. And even when you make, you know, even when you make a mistake, even when you fall, it doesn't mean that you cannot come back to the Lord or you cannot repent. You can repent, but the Bible warns us and says, do not make a habit of sinning. So you can repent and put measures in place so that you don't keep falling back into the same pit. So the next price, apart from obedience and consecration, the next price that you're going to have to pay is prayer. Prayer is very, very important. It's not possible for you to have a close walk with God if you just pray those prayers of five minutes, Lord, thank you for this food. Lord, thank you for this day. Lord, we're asking for a peaceful night. You can't. You cannot be close to someone with whom you just exchange a sentence or two with on a daily basis. But in order for you to be close to the Lord, you must invest the time in prayer just as in order for you to get close to a human being it takes you and that person sharing some quality time you know investing quality time sharing some meaningful conversations then you're going to find that now you're getting closer to the person but a person with whom you just exchange a word or two with they are they are distant and you might not even recognize the voice even on the phone and it is the same with the Lord. If you just exchange a word or two with the Lord and it ends there, obviously you're going to be distant and you cannot even recognize his voice majority of the times. But if you begin to invest the quality time every single day, you need to have time to pray. My own testimony when I started to seek the Lord at the very beginning, without a history of ever seeking God, you know, the only prayer that I, that I knew how to pray were the same five minutes prayers or less than five minutes, I would say, Lord, thank you so much for, th for this day. Thank you for the food you've given us, for your provision. Lord, we're asking for a peaceful night. That's all I had known. But when I realized that I wanted to get close to the Lord, I knew that I had to invest the time. I gave myself a minimum of 30 minutes each time, each prayer session. I, gave, I deliberately gave myself a minimum and said at each prayer session, when I go in prayer, I don't want it to be less than 30 minutes. And I began to implement that. I started to pray. And the Lord gives you strength because you want to do it. I started to pray. I started to talk to the Lord about things that mattered to me. I started to, to seek the face of God. I would talk to the Lord about the things that mattered. At that time, I was looking for a job. But I remember what I used to do was I would just lay it at the feet of the Lord. I would just tell the Lord, Lord, I'm asking for a job. 
I had just finished college. And I would tell the Lord, Lord, I'm asking for a job. I know that you're going to take care of this. You know, but what my heart really yearned for, what I really wanted is the Lord himself. I wasn't just praying just because I wanted something from the Lord. I wasn't just praying just because I wanted a job. But what I really, really wanted, what was burning upon my heart, I wanted the Spirit of God. I wanted God to fill me with the Spirit. I wanted to be close to the Lord. And that was what consumed my prayer time. You know, even the Bible says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and everything else is going to be added to you. It's not wrong for us to present our petitions to the Lord, and the Lord delights in us presenting our petitions because it shows that we trust him. And I used to do that, and I still do that. But if you want to get close to the Lord, you're also supposed to have time where after you have laid your cares, you know, because obviously you cannot have that fellowship if your heart is fearful and you're filled with all these cares, you know, about all the uncertainties and all those things that are disturbing your peace, you know, so you can lay them down at the feet of Jesus Christ. But ask the Lord to give you a heart to really, really want him for himself, not because of something physical that he's going to give you but ask the Lord to give you a heart that will really want Jesus to be the reward. You know, the Bible says that God is the rewarder of those who diligently seek him. And we, if you want to get close to God, then you need to ask the Lord to bring you to a place where you seek Jesus as your reward. And it is not by might or power. We have no power to even desire to pray in the first place or to even love the lord we can't love the lord it is the lord who can help us to love him our human strength cannot accomplish it i started to spend a lot of time in prayer in the morning in the night during the day i started to spend you know i started to cut out on all those idols that i had you know the idols of of secular entertainment for example i was an addict to movies like i would watch movies the whole day but instead i started to cut out on all those idols and i started to spend my time with jesus christ in prayer and god honored it you have to be willing to spend quality time in prayer and to be willing you know to spend time just in the presence of God, worshiping, you know, you can sing, uh, you can sing worship and read the Bible so that you may meditate on the things of the Spirit. Another price that you're going to have to pay is prayer and fasting. There is a difference when you just pray and when you do prayer and fasting. Prayer and fasting is very, very powerful. It's a very powerful gift that the Lord God has given to his children. So if you want to get close to the Lord, you're going to have to do prayer and fasting. And you're going to have to develop a lifestyle of prayer and fasting. Even when you manage to get close to the Lord, you have to continue doing the things that helped you to get to that place. Because if you stop and say, oh, now I'm close to the Lord, let me now relax. You're going to find that you won't even realize when you lose it. So you, it's something that you have to nurture and you're going to continue to have to live a life of regular prayer and fasting in order to sustain it. You know, Jesus said that when the bridegroom is taken away, then the disciples would fast. I've made several videos on fasting and I'm going to link them all in the description box. So fasting helps us to get close to the Lord much faster than usual because we actually dedicate like entire days to the Lord. Even if you just do like a fast from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m., like you can dedicate the time to the Lord and God honors it because you're giving up, you know, you're giving up your food, you're giving up your time. You don't want to focus on anything else, but you're showing the Lord that he is the one who is important. Do not develop a habit of breaking your fast before your time. 
when I was seeking the Lord for the baptism of the Holy Spirit, I was on a fast with Zipporah and my brother, my younger brother. And when we were on that fast, one day, you know, I had a habit of going to the backyard of the house, my parents' house, to go and just sit down there and pray. And sometimes I would just sit down there and just talk to God about things that were upon my heart. So after we had finished praying with Zipporah and my brother, I still felt like praying. So I decided to go to the backyard to go and pray. But when I, I was going to the backyard, I found that my elder brother was preparing his lunch because my elder brother was not on a fast with us. So he was preparing his lunch and he was frying some fish. And when I looked at the food, I was really, really tempted because I was very hungry and it was already midday and I hadn't eaten, you know, and the sun was hot and all that. And I started to get tempted, you know, when I looked at the food, it looked so amazing like i just felt like i really need to eat you know and for a second you know i was really tempted like i want to eat but then i remembered that jesus is more important than this food i looked away from the food and i turned my heart to the lord again i went to the backyard of the house and i went and fell down on my knees and continued to seek the lord so now, imagine if I just broke my fast, just like that. I probably would have never received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, even now. But I turned my back on the food that I so badly wanted. And I decided that the Lord was more important. And the Lord honored that. And he helped me to find him. And he gave me the desire of my heart. So prayer and fasting, whenever you are tempted, you need to remember that it's only for a short time. It's not like you're going to be starving forever. Even if you're on an extended fast, know that very soon your period of prayer and fasting is going to come to an end and you're going to be able to eat all that food that you're envying, you know. But not only that, you would have achieved the spiritual result that you're looking for. So don't break your fast. Don't develop a habit of breaking your fast. You must overcome. Prayer and fasting is really going to help you to get close to the Lord. Many people are failing to pay the price for walking closely with the Lord because it's a road of self-denial and continuous self-denial because once you slack back, you're going to find that you have lost it. We cannot walk closely with the Lord while we belong to the world without being consecrated to Jesus Christ. So we must turn our back on sin. And the Lord is the one who helps us. All these things that I have talked about, it's not by might or power. You make a conscious resolve and stick to it, yes to leave your sin, to implement prayer and prayer and fasting. But it is the Lord who gives the grace. You ask the Lord to give you the strength to do all these things, to, to seek him with all your heart. And the Lord is able. When I had been spending time with the Lord, you know, because the Lord is the one who helps us to draw near. The Bible says that no man can come to Jesus unless the Father draws them. So the Lord is the one who has given you a desire to even want to be close to Him. And the one who has given you the desire to want to be close to Him is also able to give you the ability to pray much more. He's able to give you the ability to do fasting. He's able to give you the ability to leave your sins and be consecrated, to be separated, to stop taking the so-called little sins for granted. Like, oh, it's just a joke. Oh, it's just a video, you know. It's just a funny video. But it's grieving the Spirit of God, and the Spirit of God is going to make it clear to you that it's grieving. 
and it's up to you now to ignore that and just say oh it's no more or not and that's going to determine it's going to play a part on whether or not you can walk closely with the lord so the lord is a jealous god when i began to implement the 30 minute uh, prayer sessions you know and also the i was also implementing the prayer and fasting and i started to realize that now i was able to spend much more time in prayer because during those times of prayer, I started to ask the Lord that, Lord, give me the ability that when I'm in your presence, when I'm here praying, Lord, help me that I may forget everything and everyone and lose consciousness of time so that I may only think of you. Let me just be lost in your presence, Lord. And God honors prayer and he honored that. I started to realize that each time I went down on my knees to start praying, I started to realize that by the time I'm done praying, I realized that it's been hours. Like it's been three hours and it feels like maybe I've just prayed 30 minutes. Yet at the beginning, 30 minutes felt like an eternity. But it's the doing of the Lord. That's why I say it's not by might or power, it's the Lord. But it first takes our effort and our decision to say this is what we want to do. And the Lord starts to work on your heart when you start to do this. I hadn't really gone away uh, from home for a certain period of time because I had been spending all my time, like all my days were literally being spent in the presence of God because I wasn't working then, obviously. Even when you're working, you can still make it work. I have a video um, on how can you seek the Lord when you're so busy. You can still find time. Like for example, you can start to wake up earlier than you normally wake up so that you may have that extra time to spend with the Lord. Like maybe you wake up an hour earlier and spend an hour praying. Then also, I, one thing that I always talk about for people who are busy, if you look at your screen time, you're going to find that you have spent hours on your phone. Yet it doesn't feel like, because it's just like a few minutes here, a few minutes there. So you can actually decide to let that screen time instead be used for something like maybe reading the Bible or something to help you meditate on the Lord. So those, those little, little times that we're always spending on social media is what actually accumulates. And you're going to find that you've spent like four hours or five hours on social media. But you're going to say, I don't have time. But how did you manage to spend all that much time if you look at the statistics on your phone? So you can actually channel that to maybe you can t start to read your Bible instead during those times or during your lunch break at your work. And also you can come and pray in the evening and you can even come and pray maybe another hour at midnight so you can still make it work and you can even use the weekends also to intensify now even on your prayer and fasting so you can do it even when you're busy it's still possible to get close to the lord and when you begin to spend time with god his voice is going to become so clear to you his, his voice is going to become clearer and clearer. And it's only going to keep getting better. So when I started to spend this time with the Lord, the Lord honored it as well. His, you know, a relationship with Jesus is a two-way. It's not just about you. It's not just about God. It's about the two of you being in a relationship. So it's not just you coming to God, but it's also God coming to you. That's why the Bible says, draw near to me and i will draw near to you so the lord doesn't just sit and watch you just coming all the way to him but when you start to come close to him he also comes close to you when i started to spend this time in prayer and also doing prayer and fasting and being consecrated to the lord stopping the things that i realized were sinful i started to spend my time with jesus instead so that is being consecrated to the lord and now the Lord started to honor that. He also started to draw near. Like his presence could literally be felt that the Lord is close. 
one day when I went out to run some errands, you know, and for the first time, I felt something that I hadn't felt ever before because I hadn't left home for some time. But that day when I went out to run some errands and then I looked at the people, all of a sudden, you know, these people were just going about the business, like their everyday life. But when I looked at them, I felt very sorrowful for the people. I really pitied them because I knew, you know, I could feel it in my spirit that these people are, you know, like they do not know the Lord yet. They are living their lives as though everything is okay without a care for the, for the things of the Lord. I really wanted them to have what I have. And then I later realized that I was feeling God's heart for his people. Previously, when I had started to seek the Lord, prayer was a struggle that when I knelt down to pray, I couldn't wait to be done because I had a list of things that I, I would rather be doing. But now, when I was doing anything else, it became like it's such a bother. Like what I really want is to be on my knees praying. What I really want is just to be there, maybe at the backyard or in the, in a, in a room alone, just talking to the Lord, pouring out my heart to the Lord and also listening to the Lord, you know, reading his word or singing or something like that. So the Lord changed my heart. I had no ability to love Jesus and neither do you have an ability to love Jesus. But loving the world comes very naturally. But when we implement all these things, the Lord is able to change our hearts. The Lord says that I'll give you a new heart. I'm going to take out the heart of stone and give you a new heart. And that is what the Lord did for me. And that is what the Lord wants to do for you. And when you finally get to this point where the Lord does this for you, he gives you a new heart. Now you are yearning for his presence. I remember one day I was with my brothers and we were just not so far from home. Like it was a place like 10 minutes walk from our home. But I really felt like, I, I just want to be home. I just want to go and be with the Lord. And I felt as though my brothers maybe were walking too slow. I told them I need to go home, you know. And I remember that when we just reached near home, I couldn't wait, you know. I just had to go, like I really had to rush home and run to the backyard. And when I was finally falling down on my knees now, before the Lord, it literally filled me with joy. Like joy was just exploding. Like finally, I'm in the presence of God alone, where I want to be, where I can talk to the Lord. I started to talk to the Lord about things on my heart. Like you can tell the Lord even about things that you're not even requesting for. You can ask him for counsel, you know. Ask the Lord, Lord, this and this is happening. What should I do? Lord, how can I handle this situation? And sometimes you can just inform him about things like, Lord, today this and this happened. But the Lord really honors when we honor him. Even the word of God says that those who honor me, I will honor. And those who despise me, I will despise. So it's not a one-way thing. You cannot just expect Jesus to just draw you close. You have to come near. Then he will also come near. He's bound to keep his part. As long as you keep your part, the Lord is bound to keep his part. I started to realize that the Lord was so close. When I would pray, the Lord was always so close, so near. His presence became so tangible. And you know, one thing I wanted to say is, you don't have to see Jesus in order for you to find Jesus. But finding the Lord means coming to a place where you're connected to him, you are in fellowship, you are one with him. That is what it means. Not everyone will see the Lord here on the earth. If you see him, that's a good thing, but don't feel like maybe the Lord is so far from you just because you've never seen him in a dream or in a vision or anything, or the Lord has never appeared to you. That's not what it means. 
but we must be more concerned about seeing the Lord on that day when we're going to die. You know, we must see the Lord on that day. But the Lord wants us to be very close to Him even now. His presence is going to be so tangible. The Lord didn't hide it. He said it very clearly. If any man wants to come after me, he must deny himself. He must take up his cross and follow me. So is the Lord worth it to you? Are you willing to deny yourself, take up your cross and follow the Lord? Are you willing to get into the Holy of Holies? Because the way has already been created for us.